Hey everyone, my name is Ryan. We're here, and this is going to be week number three of the UPL low tier offseason. And we are up against Matt O'Shea and his Montreal Milotics. And this is going to be a really, really fun matchup in particular. Although, I'll be completely honest, this was being played way out of schedule. It was played really ahead of schedule, and I wasn't as prepared as I normally would be. But more so, I kind of wasn't in the right headspace to kind of be building and kind of battling these matches. But I don't think it was a bad build by any stretch of the imagination. In particular, because I just looked all up and down his roster. And he barely has any kind of grass resists. And it was something that I really felt like I could uh, take advantage of in the situation. So as you can see, I kind of ended up bringing a Scarf Lilligant. It's something that I really kind of thought that I could abuse in this situation that I thought I could have fun with. And so every kind of other decision on in this team building was sort of ensuring that Lilligant could end up winning the game for me. And mainly because of that, we will be debuting Magmar. Now, Magmar is insane in this matchup because the two things primarily that would kind of want to stand up against the Lilligant, being the Berserker and the Roselia, do not appreciate hits from a Specs Magmar. And just as far as the team goes, I knew from the very beginning that Roselia was going to be a must, must, must bring because it really deals with a lot of my team, right? It does kind of protect against the grass weakness, but more importantly, uh, it kind of stops my Kingler in his tracks, as well as Lapras. And funnily enough, so I had watched a couple of Matt's matches and there were two sets in particular that I kind of felt were likely to come, right? So as soon as I see the Lapras, I think about, I believe in week two, he used a Scarf Lapras and I thought that would be really good to kind of catch me off guard, right? Because not only going into the Water Absorb Lapras and then uh, on the next turn, I would want to click Superpower, and a Scarf Thunderbolt should generally clean clean up that Kingler slot when really I kind of felt like I had to play afterwards. I thought that was super duper viable, and that Kangaskhan, immediately I saw uh, a banded Kangaskhan coming from a mile away. Uh, I saw him use that in, in a different week, and he seemed absolutely giddy using it, and my Kangaskhan matchup is not great just in general, so I thought that was an absolute guaranteed bring for him. And other than that, there were mons that I kind of expected that he does like, like the Spirit Tomb, like the Bahiam, I kind of see him kind of gravitating towards those mons in general. If anything, the Archeops probably was the mon that I kind of expected the least. I thought it did have a decent matchup against me, but he did have some other options like like a Mudsdale, like a Berserker, like a, just some different things that I kind of felt like that Archeops was kind of ending up as a sixth mon. I thought all the other mons made a ton of sense to me and, and kind of were mons that I expected to see, but he had a number of different options for kind of how to round out the team. But with that, we'll get right into the match. Now, again, every mon on the team is kind of built towards a Lilligant endgame, right? So everything is just built to kind of wear down the team or just kind of pivot in and out. This little incursion is going to kind of be important for that because it will kind of allow me to get in and out of bad situations and just kind of get into some mons that can wear down the team over time. I will lead off with the Olympian Persian mainly because, like I said, I did see the way that he likes to use the Kang, and he likes to kind of use it as a turn one, like, delete button, like, turn one nuke. And um, I really didn't have any other counterplay to it, and he did have a bunch of different lead options, but Bandit Kangaskhan turn one was the one that, like, I really desperately needed my Olympian Persian out on turn one for. So I do lead off with it. I'm able to kind of pivot out and kind of try to mitigate this thing, kind of play around it a, a little bit. And I'm thinking a ton about where I want to go here and how I want to play this because um, I think if anything, I'm I, I'm running cows just to make sure that that um, I'm not putting myself in too bad a position here. But again, just mainly that I can take a bandit hit and kind of be able to 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 maneuver from here um but also i think i just wanted to put myself in a position where i could confirm that it that it is banded as soon as i start to take some hits and i believe that this was a really physically defensive zatu that i bring in um i did feel like i needed it for for certain things but obviously this is going to be one of the biggest ones and you can see it does a little bit o o over half and with and with leftovers the, these rolls are going to get really kind of all, all over the place but this is really kind of one of my best options unfortunately as far as these things go but i think i just go for the roost here question mark just um just to try to kind of either wear this thing down over time or figure out some way to kind of manage this in in in, in the future because at this point really um my uh, you can see even after a, a parting shot the best way that i have to kind of manage this thing is to kind of try to wear this thing down over time however i made a huge huge mistake and when i was 
you know, kind of going through all, all the things in the calc, I had completely forgotten that um, I had made this a slightly slower Zatu set, and uh, the speed number that I was looking at in the calc was the speed number from the Illum Persian. So in my head, I was thinking I was fine to make this play because I outspeed the the Kangaskhan and I can kind of roost it and cause it to, to wear itself down. And this was just a 100% like mental error on, on on my part. I just partially like i said wasn't in in the right headspace but also it was just kind of a, a, a silly team building mistake a, a, a mistake that I, I ideally you know wouldn't make a, a a ton of the time but here's just an unfortunate situation where uh it was just a mental mistake where i had forgotten that I, that i that i made my zatu a little bit slower in 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 the final build and uh i ended up being slower than than kangaskhan which means that i wasn't able to 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 wear it down the way that i wanted to and just kind of assuming that the zatu would outspeed here i'm in a position where um i can kind of go back into the persian and i kind of expected this that he might either want to want to either switch out expect me to to want to just um party shot again or or that he would want to kind of keep the his kangaskhan as is with an item attack so i do get the spear tomb coming in which put me in an awkward position because I really didn't know what the spear tomb wanted to do. I kind of, I kind of expected a really trolley set, like, um, like some combination of like Willowis, Pain Split, um, Shadow Sneak, something, something to that effect, right? Which really hurts my team a lot because, um, things like Kingler, obviously, if this thing is built really defensively, it can kind of put me in a bad position. Uh, if it's able to just take a really strong hit and will me back um, But he, he goes for the call mine and I'm terrified at this point like this is legitimately to kind of terrifying but We're here and uh, I Don't really know what to do. So I'm thinking I can give this thing up Well, okay, so so a, a lot of different thoughts are, are, are going through my head, but my main thought here is that whatever happens, this this spear tomb is not going to be able to 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 oko my garbador. And even if I have to give up my my garbador, um, hazard seemed really strong for me in this in, in this scenario. And uh, I believe this is actually a max special defensive garbador. I'm I'm, I'm remembering right now. Um, it's, it's obviously not built specifically for this type of situation. It's really just meant to kind of come in and kind of um, get some hazards up and kind of um, set myself up for for the the, the later game. But uh, this is what we have to do now, right? But my thinking here, my my honest thinking here was that okay. This thing is calm mining up. I have to assume, for the time being at least, I have to assume for the time being at least, that this thing is probably like max physical defense, right? And and I know that as long as I keep it below a, a certain threshold, and and I believe it was, it was around like 50 to 60 ish percent, then Kingler could always come in and 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 revenge KO and uh, bring this thing down, right? So. In my head, I have a couple turns to, to, to spike up. If he wants to call mine up to, to a million, it's not going to matter. As long as I get a couple of hits in with with my Garbodor, I'm able to keep it low enough where Kingler can kind of do what it needs to do, right? That's my thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the situation is generally un, 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 under control. And truthfully, Garbodor took took that uh, took that Shadow Ball a lot better than I would have when I than I would have expected. Obviously, um, this is a max special offensive Garbodor, and uh, Spear Tomb isn't the strongest thing in the world, but it had a couple calm lines up, and it was really strong. But now he goes for the for, for the rest, and now I'm thinking, now I'm like mildly panicking because uh, is, this is a much more difficult situation for for, for me being, obviously. And uh, not only that, but now it's kind of an open question as to whether I'm going to be able to keep this thing low enough, where Kingler can come in and kind of do what it needs to do. And uh, I'm gonna have to play these turns really, really carefully because whatever, if I end this interaction where, where, where Garbodor goes down, I'm fine with Garbodor going down in the situation. But if I end this interaction with Garbodor go going down and this thing is above like 70 ish percent, this thing could claim another KO on my team, and that's just you know close to getting really, really bad for for, for my team. But thankfully, I get a little bit lucky with with some rolls, and also, uh, fun fact, I, I ended up being a little bit lucky because. Um, 
he ended up not making his his uh, his spirit tomb pressure more or less like at the last minute. And if the thing was pressure, then it could easily just make me run out of gunk shots pretty quickly. And then uh, I am just kind of high and dry with really kind of um, in an awkward position here, right? And if I'm being honest, like if I did, I, I was telling him him I was telling him this after the match, but if I did honestly run out of gunk shots in this moment. I think I would have kind of forced myself into a choke play because I think I think I would have kind of panicked a little bit and and I would have probably you know uh, made a play like this or or I kind of have to you know roll the dice on a on a, on a on a rest turn and and here it was obvious that he was going to wake up and he was either going to collect rest or, or do something or or calm mind or do whatever the case may be um so I felt pretty safe making this play but I think if he if he uh, had been pressured and maybe run out of gunk shots, I think I would have eventually made some kind of a choke play where I end up um, trying to roll, get get a rest roll, t to be honest, um, a, a sleep talk rest roll, and going out into my Kingler for free and trying to manage it this way. Now, what I found out after after this match is that this uh, Spear Tomb is nowhere near max HP or, 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 or max defense, meaning that... Um, Kingler always KO this thing, no matter what. Like, it, like it was really even a question. Like, it was some kind of a minor roll, I think, but it, but it was a roll in, in my favor, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, and legitimately, I could have brought in the I, I could have d brought in the Kingler with any amount of HP that this thing that the Spirit Tomb was at, and been able to to OKO it outright. I had no access to that information. I had no way. Of, I, I guess I did have a way of knowing if I really uh, aggressively calc out those gunk shots. But I didn't. I didn't think that was it was gonna be the most relevant, and um, I guess it kind of put me in an awkward situation here. But that's kind of how this went down. Uh, I really, you know, I, I I guess to be fair, I I should have been been um, more careful with with calcs and 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 that kind of stuff. But uh, I kind of thought that I had the, the, this kind of game planned out, so it, it kind of didn't feel necessary to me at that moment. Here's the moment where, where I bring in the Kingler, and it was a very open question as to whether or not he would, he would want to bring in the the Lapras here. But regardless, I'm kind of, like, my hands are tied. I, I really can't do anything. And you can see, like, I kind of did what I felt like I had to do, right? This thing is at 55%. Uh, it didn't rest up. I'm able to to kind of get my Kingler in here to, to Revenge KO. And in my head, I did I, I played that exactly perfectly. Although I had, it turns out that I had a ton more leeway because um, my Kingler, you know, could 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 kill this thing in its sleep, right? So, uh, thankfully, we get out of that uh, situation, and kind of expected the Lapras to want to come in um, for for a couple reasons. One, um, I I could be scarfed, right? I could be scarfed. I could be banded. Banded is less likely, but but there's an open question as to whether or not I, 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 I could be scarfed. And Lapras would kind of test for that. Um especially the if I'm not scarfed, and then the Lapras could be scarfed. He he could uh, try to catch me off guard and thunderbolt me. He he could assume he, he he could as he could try to lure me in with the Lapras, kind of not uh, make me think that uh that I don't want to superpower and, and do it oh or, or or just think that that i kind of um don't have the superpower and and take advantage of me in, in that way but that's why i kind of really want to play this turn carefully i go into my persian because i feel like i have to scout i feel like i have to figure out what this thing wants to do it goes for the freeze dry obviously uh that just honestly made me think even more so that that it was scarved so I, I take a lot of damage on my little Persian, which I am not a fan of in the slightest bit. But uh, obviously, this is this damage to me is worth it as long as I can knock off the, its scarf not, or, or knock off whatever item it may be. This interaction still feels very worth it to me. So uh, that's kind of the the assumption that that I'm going off of here, and it, it turns out that it's Chapel Bear. And that really threw me off. It genuinely threw me off because I I would have 100% played into it uh, if I didn't play this the way that I did, right? 
I would have absolutely gone for the superpower, assuming, especially be, because, like, my eyes got wide once I saw that, that, um, that, that chip damage with, with, with spikes. I got a three layer of spikes in that entire inter interaction, which I, I got, I, I tried to trade to the spirit tomb for the Garbodor, but I got a three, three layers of spikes, which in this moment, my eyes got big seeing all that chip damage. And I would have absolutely played into the, the, uh, the Chopperberry, had I not uh, trying to play around Scarf Lapras, which is kind of funny to say. But we got off the Thunderbolt. We get we get off uh, a nominal amount of chip damage. He goes for the Ice Beam, takes out my my person. But I feel okay here, right? I feel like I have successfully maneuvered around here. And again, um, my main job in my mind is to preserve um, this this Kingler as kind of my breaking power because the rest of his team is is reasonably slow so i feel like this kingler has still has a ton of breaking power to, to offer me uh while while uh and and i guess i, I didn't even think about this at the time but i guess I'm, i still am kind of bluffing scarf because i switched out on, on liquidation and then i come back into to body slam i could still potentially be scarfed i'm, I'm making him think about that but but because his team is, is like reasonably slow, I, I still feel like I have a decent amount of of um, breaking power to offer here. Obviously, it gets really tricky with the Roselia and just with a bunch of other kind of uh, situ bad situations that he could put me in. But obviously, the, the Roselia is going to come in. Spikes help me out a lot here. Uh, spikes are huge in this situation. And uh, I honestly don't remember what I do. I Either way seems reasonably... Uh, solid here. If, if I just want to body slam for damage in, in the face of a sleep powder, or turns out I switch out. Um, I go out into the 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 magmar. Obviously, the magmar specs. The magmar is kind of built for this Roselia, but more importantly, it puts me in a position where um, it, it it sets me up well, right? Right where either he uh, after. He KOs the after after I KO the Roselia. Um, he has to choose w w what he wants to bring in, and I and in most situations, I prefer to have this thing in than than anything else. He gets off a sludge bomb, does a lot of damage. HP never matters on this thing, so I'm fine with it. Uh, I will get a Specs Lava Plume off, and this uh, obviously is going to pick up the KO. I don't think there's really um, much to this, I kind of considered, you know, clicking te teleport. I spent a couple seconds on it, but uh, him going out into the Archaeops is really un unlikely, and Lava Plume mildly punishes punishes it either way. And him just having this this result in, in the back to get spiked on again, and to potentially have to take some really strong Magmar hits in the future, is not ideal for him. So I don't really think there's a whole ton of reasons for him to want to keep this. However. Um, I mean, it would be a a valid play for sure, but uh, it just seemed unlikely in the in the situation in the moment. Um, and yeah, th there's the lava plume. I don't think this reveal specs yet, but it'll be clear soon enough. Now, there's a lot of things going on here. There's a lot of things going on here. Uh, first and foremost, I am not the fastest Kingler. I am a kind of slow Kingler, but again, his team is is pretty slow. So I don't have the a uh, whole ton to kind of have to outspeed. Um and I'm built a little bit bulky to kind of take a hit from the Archaeop if I have to. Uh and my Lilligant is scarf, but but it's only scarfed enough to outspeed our Archaeops. I'm not really trying to outspeed any any other kind of scarf monster like accounting for being knocked off or anything like that. I'm just as as low as speed as I as I as minimum speed in order to to outspeed a, a, a an Archaeops. He goes for Trick Room here. And in truth, I think that the game is over right now. And um I am really frustrated in this moment because in my head, I think I'm I, like you can see here, I'm I'm grasping at straws. I really don't know what to do anymore because uh when I see the trick room go off, I kind of think that the game is over. Because I in my head he he clicks like a three times and the game ends uh he clicks psychic KOs the the 
the Magmar and I'm I'm feeling really defeated straight up like I don't know what to do in this moment uh, and it turns out that I send out my Kingler and uh, I I click body slam but in every I have to assume this 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 thing is Thunderbolt Psychic potentially kills me. I don't know. It depends on, on a lot of things, but Thunderbolt just straight up kills me. And you have to remember, right? Because because I'm, I'm under Trick Room, right? And if I were to bring out the Lilligant, then Lilligant um, gets uh, outspeeds the entire team because it's Scarfed under Trick Room that just kind of screws me over. So again, in my head, the, the game's already over. But I take a hit here. I KO the Behem, and that's huge. And what turns out to be the case is that the Archaeops is also Scarfed. I, I found this out after the match. There's no way for, for me to know this before the match, right? But the Archaeops is Scarfed. And I just want to talk through this scenario really quickly. Because if I had gone into the Lilligan, I'm able to take a hit and KO the Behem in return. Then he either does one of two things. He either goes into the Kangaskhan, in which case the Kangaskhan kills the Lilligant because it underspeeds under Trick Room. I go out into Kingler, and because the Kangaskhan lost its item earlier, Itemless Kangaskhan never KOs Kingler. I KO the Kangaskhan, and then the Scarfed Archaeops comes in, and because we're under Trick Room, I use his own Trick Room against him. Kingler underspeeds the Archaeops. I KO the Archaeops. Kingler wins the game, right? If he goes into the Archaeops, then I potentially KO with, with Petal Dance. I pick up a KO on the Archaeops. The same thing happens just just in reverse. So the way this, this kind of works out, right, is he potentially threw the game by setting up that Trick Room because it potentially gives me a, an opening for my Kingler to win the game. But because I was too frustrated in the moment, I couldn't see that. I couldn't see that clearly. And to be fair, I didn't know that the Archaeops was scarred. But regardless, um, I should have played to my outs. It was a really weird end game. We were talking about this earlier, where he was kind of admitting that, that he threw by clicking Trick Room, but he felt like he had to. But then I was like, I guess you kind of did, but then I threw harder, right? So so he threw first, but I threw harder, right? And that's just kind of how these things go. We This is kind of how Pokemon goes. We all have incomplete information. We play off of that incomplete information, and you know sometimes we're just frustrated, and we don't think through our plays, right? And, and all that just came together in a really weird, strange end game that uh i think we both wish we could have just played differently and kind of um had back in a way but that's gonna be week three i was a lot more frustrated in the moment but even just kind of talking through this game again in this postcom i can laugh about it more and at the end of the day this kind of stuff is gonna happen it was fun regardless it's just is what it is that's gonna be week three thank you guys so much for watching we're back really really soon with more weeks of the ubl it's more as we see of the upda um both of which are really really fun and uh, have been a ton of fun to build and play, but with that, what's gonna thank you guys so much for watching and builds again.